Welcome to tonight's contest, Hoops for Courage game, benefiting Camp Good Days, ESM versus JD. And here are the starting lineups, introduced by John Goodson. Once again, welcome to tonight's game. I am Michael Ferris, joined by Casey Vaughn. Casey, I gotta say, I'm not sure I'd be able to make it through that high five line. That's a lot of handshakes. Is that like a whole practice? 
to a hole. You got to practice a hole. You have to spend some time in practice to go over it to make sure everyone's got it down. I'll tell you this. I know that JD's got some height and people that can jump, and ESM has speed. Uh, number 10, uh, Jimmy Ferns, sometimes will outrun the pixel camera if you're watching this on the National oh, wow. Federation broadcast. We have one wow. of those in our gym too, and if he steals it, he's faster than the camera can pick it up. That's really funny. I'd love to see that tonight. Officials are in pink and black tonight. Contribute to the camp good days. Spartans are in a tight man. Immediately Peyton Shumper. Step back. Rebound by Virtual Wright. Escato running an old play called the chin play. JD and man to man. ESM running a lot of screens. And they get on the board first. Jimmy Ferns, the wide open basket. He's listed at 5'10". I think that's generous. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure he can dunk. Wow. To quickly with JD's first three. For those who weren't with us for the first game, it's the second game for Hoops for Courage. JD trying to throw a little double team action. At Nick Peterson. Great finish there over Bradford. Nick's six foot eight. And comes down and gets the block for Peterson. Tonight's earlier contest between ESM and JD. Girls varsity was won by JD. We expect this one to be a little bit tighter contest. Holmes with the basket. Oh, sorry, Cook with the basket. Not quite sure what Schumpert was doing there. I think he was not expecting him to be so quick. Yeah. Schumpert coming back. Older Schumpert, Peyton, with the tough finish. Pescato takes the bump and drops it in, kind of a no-look circus shot. The officials are letting them bump near the basket. But not away from the basket. Yeah. So we're just also getting into our First quarter here underway. Three minutes gone by so far. JD five, ESM eight. <laughs> Offensive rebound and put back by Nick Peterson. Virtual right with another quick step. Just Went right by Autry, which led to that offensive board by Peterson. Inside out, Saplicki left open, made his earlier three. ESM looks to run. Oh, they missed Peterson inside. Feeding the beast inside. Would have liked to have seen a left hand on that. Shoots it with the right, gets the roll. Twelve five Spartans. ESM coming out in a two-three zone. 
forcing JD maybe to shoot from the outside. As Payton Schumper puts in his first three of the night. Except that was Preston. And now JD comes back in a 2 3 zone. Great box out there by Bradford. Peterson could have potentially gotten called for over the back. But again, officials letting them play here. Virtual right, probably got four rebounds already. He's, he's cleaning up there. Five, 10, one of the shorter guys on the lineup for ESM. Rebound is about Hart. <laughs> Jimmy Ferns, he can get up. Not scared to go right at Bradford. ESM wants to push off. This is a very large crowd. JD student section in all white. The ESM student section in black. Two schools are neighboring schools. Peyton Trumpet for three. Archie called for the travel. Son of Syracuse associate head coach, Adrian Autry. for three. Later. Long Bradford again, able to get his hand on the board so he has some tip outs. Yes, we'll get into that SU connection. There's a bunch tonight. Payton Center letting it fly. Getting a nice reaction from the JD student section. ESM with a three-point advantage. It's about one and a half left in this first quarter. JD again. And that looks like, almost like a one-four zone. Saplicki is guarding Ferns quite tightly. Right there, able to get inside. Bradford just couldn't finish. And Peterson snagged the rebound. <laughs> Virtual right from the corner. Three over the much taller Peyton Chumpert. Extends the lead to six. Preston left open. Another tip out. Autry looking for more. Now Connor Durkin will come in for Trey Autry. He's just looking for the foul, but couldn't get the call from the official. Now JD in that 2-3. Trying to set screens for Peterson, who's wrestling pretty hard with Shumpert down low. Foot on the line. All right, that a foul. Kickball. kickball, shot clock will be reset to 15. Turned now off, yep, because last 13.7 seconds left in the first quarter. Good board by Shumper, get out quickly. Justin 
Hushelper with the throw now. Durkin able to get a piece on virtual right side and the first quarter comes to an end. Quite an entertainment so far this first quarter. That's right, it's everything we were looking for. Slam dunk, lots of threes, good defense. The number one ranked team in Syracuse, JD. Number three team, ESM, and it's everything we hoped it would be. Good time for one of that last half court heave. We see somebody come running at you. Pump fake. You're gonna get fouled and shoot three. Yep. I believe nine of JD's 13 points came from three pointers in that first quarter. They did. Be interesting to see if the, that shooting goes cold and definitely have to rely more on driving and attacking the basket. That's right. Syracuse connection, we had talked about earlier. We had uh, Autry, whose father played at Syracuse University. The two Shumperts, whose father played at Syracuse University. Sip Licky, whose father used to coach at Syracuse University. And over on the ESM side, he hasn't been in the game yet, Jackson Palum, his father was an All-American goalie at Syracuse University. So a lot of the Syracuse University talent stayed local. I'm pretty sure I also saw Scott Schwedes in the crowd tonight. Oh, yeah. Another SU legend. <laughs> the list could go on from JD though with Dewan Coleman. And Andy Routens, Brandon Trish, Danny Shays. Buddy Beheim. Buddy Beheim, yeah. He had he, enough time here at JD. He did, absolutely. His sister was better though. <laughs> <laughs> Although Jimmy would probably say he was the best, you know. All three of them very good in their respective ways. Absolutely, and competitive too, right? Wide open look for Moscato. Peterson's gonna just battle it back up. Gets the foul, can't get the basket to drop. And that will be Bradford's second foul. So look to see who coach Ike will turn to if he does look oh. to his bench, which doesn't look like he's doing so. Nice touch from the big man. Six foot eight, just to give you a little size comparison, he does have to duck to go through doorways at our school. <laughs> That's tall. Bradford will come out, Autry returns. This ESM roster, I see junior, 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 a few seniors thrown in there, but. Yep, experience. next year they're gonna lose a little height, but they'll have all the speed. There's a couple kids too on, on the JV team that had some height, so. Two, three zone from the Spartans. And Payton couldn't connect. Durkin gets the board. I'm throwing this out there. I would want to know where Preston Trumpert is on the court because he's living at that three-point line. And he's converting. Yes, I think he's four, three or, he's made three or four, only missed one. First takes it, lucky to keep the ball. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Not sure if anybody noticed. JD in the zone. Two, three, shot clock violation. Didn't hear much from the coaching staff about the shot clock. So they weren't really looking too quick. Cook gets a piece of Siplicki on the way up. Now Matt Siplicki had a tremendous volleyball season as well. His team made it to the state finals. Oh, wow. First time in JD school history. Volleyball, boys volleyball, it helps to be able to jump. Oh, yeah. 
and he can jump and pound the ball down. Especially with a shooter as good as him, <laughs> able to get his shot off from many different points. And JD has closed the gap to one point. And now going 3-2. Bottom two defenders, Saplicki and Shumpert. Is it a 1-3-1? One, one? Yeah, look, Saplicki did come up high. I don't know if it's because of Peterson drawing him there or if, if it was a 1-3-1. And right, now one. it looks 2-3. It's a nice adjustment, whatever that was <laughs> during the timeout. Oh, we talked about it earlier tonight. A lot of contact there, but no call for Moscato. We talked about the amazing ability if you fake a pass, it moves the defense. And now some press here. 2-2-1 two, two, press from ESM. Trey Autry somehow keeps his dribble alive. I, and I think if we look at that later on, he may have run out of bounds yeah. during the middle of that play. They're missing him behind the zone. There you go. Offensive foul called. That's two on Cook. Cook for sure has a weight advantage over Saplicki. I'm not quite sure if Saplicki was fully there. And not in any bad way. He, he is stronger than Saplicki is what I'm implying. That could have helped the offensive charge fall because I'm not quite sure if Saplicki was there. Junior Nick Brown in the game for the first time. And Gunther Schnorr in for the Red Rams. Jumper kicks to his little brother. Just short on the three. Hasn't missed many. About time to hit one. A great extra pass by Peterson. The scuttle has not made one. Ooh, that fake. It's a plicky left open. Oh, Fern's open on the side. I'm pretty sure that Pascal was just fouled by his own teammate. I don't know if you can call that. Autry and Kopp enter for J.D. and ESM. I think JD is playing a 3 2. Just that one bottom defender is coming Shadowing. up higher. Peterson draws a large attention for, from the defender. Another offensive foul. Didn't really look like enough to get that call, but. Lots of acting on that one, I think so. He knew it. He may have even started going back before he was touched. <laughs> Autry's pass. A little bit wild there. Trey Autry for three, and JD has taken their first lead of the game, 21-19. Still trying to feed it into Peterson. Durkin with the great hands. They're able to get the tip. Archer going for back to back. Suplicki should look for a shot there, catching it in the middle. Looks like Archer got away with a little bit of a travel there, but converts on the floater. Does over the top of Peterson. ESM calls a timeout. If I'm Coach Kilpatrick, I might call this timeout just to talk to the officials too. Yeah. 
Very touchy. It's nice to see Coach Ike in the suit and tie. He can be found daily greeting every student coming into school in shorts every day. He's a phys ed teacher, wears shorts, has his coffee, and greets every student coming in. It's a nice way to start the day, but I don't know how he does it when it's sub-zero and he's still out there. Probably the most well-known faculty member in this high school. Probably, because he says hello to everyone. He's as, everywhere. He is. Coaches football, too, lacrosse. No defensive change for JD. So let's see how S, uh, ESM reacts. Double team in the corner. Oh, like another dunk. Another dunk possibly. Yep. And dunks always bring the crowd back into the game. Peterson there. Put the ball on the floor, just take a couple back dribbles, and everyone else has to fill to get into a position to receive that pass from him, rather than just deserting. Yes, him. but he's also afraid that you know they might flop again. And Burns just picked up a foul, trying to wrestle the ball away from Peyton Trumper. You know that would have been a good time for Ferns, the shorter player, to actually do some acting because Shumpert was fly, you know aggressive with that rebound. He could have just flopped over. There's the clicky again. That's that shot you were talking about earlier, catching it in the middle. Peyton hasn't taken too many shots tonight. One of the top scorers. And it's been tough. ESM needs a basket to kind of They've been stuck on 19 for quite some time. Yep. Autry looks inside. Durkin not even looking at the basket. There he goes. Well, I would keep working Saplicki in that little mid-range area if I were Coach Ike, because he has the ability to make that shot. And then if he can make it, Peterson might step out a bit and come guard him, and then Use your quickness to get to the rim. That's where I'd like to see ESM push it. Get, you know, beat the zone down the floor. They got it in the corner. Nick Brown with the rebound and quick put back. Fouled on the attempt, doesn't put it in. We'll have a chance to shoot two. This is the first. Casey was a part of three state championship girls teams. It's been a little while since the boys have won a state title. Do you think this team has what it takes? Potentially. The, the pieces fall into place. They have the talent. And the they height. definitely have the competitive, competitiveness, the height, the skill, the IQ, I think. And Coach Ike is a great coach, and they all trust him. So, oh, I'd love to see them get one. Coach Ike has been a part of a state championship lacrosse team. He calls a timeout. But going back to your question, I think the addition of Trey Autry helps a bit. He was previously at CBA, transferred this year. Definitely given a boost to this team. All right, to pass the time, I have a little known fact about Coach Kilpatrick here at ESM. He can name just about any song in less than three seconds. Any? It's, a, any. it's unbelievable. <laughs> That's a what cool it, skill to have. What is it, Shazam, the app on oh, your phone? Yeah. He, he was Shazam before Shazam. I used to call him and be like, hey, what's this song? And he would tell you. He's the human form of Shazam. Yes. <laughs> it's fabulous. Scott brings the ball up. 
trying to get ESM moving. They finally got off that 19 number, that, but they're down five, 40 seconds to go. <laughs> Foul call underneath. Not as egregious as other fouls we've seen tonight, but that one gets called and Cook will head to the line. Definitely a packed house tonight. Only thing close to this, it's a CBA game and a CBA game will fill every seat yep. and the track. Back when day one and Tyler Cavanaugh played for JD, I remember the track was lined. It was. And Trish. Yep. I, I, I'm forgetting the name, but there was a player at um, CBA that was good. He was, he was about six foot six, and watching those guys battle was amazing games. Just under 15 seconds here left in the second quarter. JU with a four point advantage. ESM with the basketball. Brown takes it to the hoop, gets some contact. Pushes Siblicki off. <laughs> oh, I don't know if that was caught on camera, but that was great. Full court shot, the cheerleaders get out of the way. And we'll be uh, back after a, a few moments. ESM 23, home team JD 25. JD cheerleaders are coached by Alana Jones. Alana's sister, Lena Jones, won a state championship when I was a senior on our girls basketball team. She did. And then um, ESM cheerleaders traveled today. And those cheerleaders those cheerleaders are coached by Nikki Planning. So it's great that they could take the short trip over all in support of Camp Good Days. So that's a big loss. Peterson comes back in. Birch Wright is hurt, taking a breather on the bench. I think Peterson is in a tough position because he's tried to attack, hasn't gone his way. He's gotten some unfair fouls called on him. But if I'm JD, I'm going right at him. But now he's back offense. at the high post. Yep. But see, he can also set that screen on, on the top of the zone. Correct. Create some space in the paint. 
15 seconds left on the shot clock, plenty of time. And I don't know, having watched Peterson enough, if he's capable of hitting that just a little jump shot right inside the free throw line, but that's where he could be effective in this game for the rest of this quarter. And for the second time tonight, the up and under by Cook. And we have ourselves a two point game. Quick shot there by Preston Schumpert. Little piece on it, deflected, made it come up short. You know what, I like this. I would put um, Joe down low, have him body up again. Step back, and a two is good. And we are all tied up with 6.45 left to play. That was a really beautiful jump shot from Moscato. Great body control to get that defender a step back. Create some space for his jump shot. His first basket in quite some time. Seplicki with the answer. You wanted him to shoot that earlier. I like that shot for Seplicki. I think he could be really effective in that high post area. This is a good place to get a roll down from Peterson. And they missed it. He's open up top. Nine on the shot clock. There he goes, posting up down low on Schumpert. Brown from deep. Didn't hit the bas basket. Shot clock violation. Tough to call a shot clock violation with Autry with the ball running possibly on a breakaway. Yep. Be nice for this game to end on a buzzer beater. Oh man. But in regulation, not in overtime. We're not paid for the extra time. Yeah. Schumpert for three. Extends this lead to five. This game has been everything that we could have possibly asked for. Correct, except for a buzzer beater. So let's get <laughs> one of those. Call it a night. Now Payton Schumpert starting to heat up a little bit. His brother has gone a little bit quiet here. Start the fourth. JD with a five point lead. Once again, impressed with the size of both crowds. Both have been in it. Especially now that it's heated back up, the pace of scoring is picked back up. Brad, is this, I think they're back to their starting lineup. Correct, yep. Looks like ESM except for Birch Hill Wright and Jimmy Ferns. ESM with a couple starters on the bench, I think they have done fairly well on the floor on offense without them. Yep. Moscato nice got sure. going a little bit. Koch gave him that boost with the air. That was one. a big basket. Yep. Peterson with a nice spin move. Able to get his eyes around on it. That's hard to defend. Great defense there by Ike. Cook to force the turnover. Ike's trying to explain his cause. I'm just concerned Peterson's gonna get the ball and Shumpert's gonna go. Shumpert right on his back. We got him up in the air, no call. That should have been a foul down low. Yes, I'm able to get it back. They missed Peterson open. 
underneath. There is definitely a possession change, so this ball will stay with ESM. And they hit the rim, so you got both. Yeah, Cop got Autry in the air. Autry jumped into him. That should have been a foul. Get an explanation. Explanation at the scorer's table. Although Shot clock reset to 29. Although I, I would say some time came off the yeah. clock. I'd say a little bit more came off that as well. It's really no advantage either way because ESM is going to look to score as soon as they can. Down three. Good balance control. Wide open three, straight on. Pop just muscling to Flippy. Fighting for the ball. Pop just burst through Shumper and Saplicki to get that rebound. You should see him play football. Oh, I, <laughs> I believe you. A little bit different take. Foul on yep. Bradford. Brown should have been a little bit more aware of that he knew he had those guys up in there and got up and shot it. Could have been at the line shooting too. Well, they also switched Bradford on to Peterson up top. ESM absolutely killing JD on the boards and the official calls time to make sure Saplicki is okay. It looked like he hit his head. And that is the explanation the official is giving Coach Kilpatrick. Because at that time, ESM had an advantage, five guys standing up versus four. Safety first. Peterson's gonna go right at Trumper. And that's the same exact move that he's done two times before and got called for the offensive foul. Yes. So, and Preston Schumper, a little miscommunication there with Matt Saplicki. So this is gonna possibly go down to the wire. By the way, I don't wanna call it right now. JD, I think, has made a lot more free throws than ESM tonight. So if it comes down to a shooting battle at the free throw line, advantage JD. Cook for three. Nick Brown off the bench. He's got a couple been, good offensive rebounds. This is when it matters. He's been extremely helpful to the Spartans. Although he might not be a scorer, he's helping them in other ways. Chasing down some loose balls from behind. You can't do that. <laughs> If I'm JD right here, I'm slowing it down to get a good possession. Don't rush anything. ESM's had the ball on offense for I'd say the good portion of the past two and a half minutes. There's also, well, there's that shot you've been wanting all day. Sometimes your three point shooters, like both Shumperts, um, I noticed it too with like a Buddy Beheim. It's a lot easier for them to make those three pointers when it comes from the paint. So get the ball inside and then kick it out to the three point yep. shooters. So then you're facing when you catch. Yep. And JD hasn't gotten it inside in a while to kick that back out. So if I'm JD, if that's how ESM is going to defend the next possessions, I'm going inside to Matt Saplicki all day. I trust him with that jump shot more than any other player with any other shot at this point in the game, yep. unless it's a wide open layup. So 2.30 to go, three point lead for the Rams, Spartans with the ball. It's a time for a good possession. I think the officials are also gonna let them battle a little bit more down low than they did earlier. Nobody wants to see Peterson come out of the game right now. I know. I hope Coach Kilpatrick is drawing something up to go inside to Peterson. Because I. Or cop. 
<laughs> Correct. I don't think Shumper can guard. He, he's just getting out-muscled by them down low. And yes, the officials have made questionable calls, but I'd go for it. At this point in the game, Peterson just made the same move he's made twice before, and he was able to score and not get called for the offensive foul finally. I'd like to see them go inside. That's where the advantage is. Ooh, they just gave away a TV. JD sticking with that three, two. Bradford smart to get around that screen. Going to Peterson inside. There you go. Can't stop him. I would also think about taking it at him on defense. Correct. Make him get that fifth foul. Peyton Schumper, huge three. I think JD's two or three best offensive players, they hang out beyond the arc. Yep. I think if they were to put him inside and go at Peterson, I think that could hurt ESM. But for, at this point in the game, from start until now, they've been hanging out around the three-point line. And they've made a tremendous amount of those, yeah. too, though. And I don't think Matt Bradford as, is as effective inside as an offensive player going up a guy like Peterson. So I think if they were to go at Peterson, put Shumpert, one of the Shumperts in at the free throw line to have some fun yep. with them in the paint. But Saplicki has been tremendous from there so far, so yep. I guess stick with what's working. First half uh, was uh, Preston, second half Peyton. Three-pointers, in fact, Shumper keeps hitting from the exact same spot. Like two feet <laughs> beyond the arc, <laughs> taking the harder shot. So big possession. I don't know how many timeouts these guys have left. Both teams at five team fouls. Now JD extending that three two. Jumper able to get a tip on that and now JD comes the other way. Smart there by Autry to pull it out. Slowing it down. Saplicki's first miss in a while from that spot. Just about a minute 30 left, ESM down four. There it is, inside to Peterson. They had him. They even have Cop wide open on the low block, Autry isn't giving him too much attention when the ball's on the weak side. Haven't gotten many of those. Brown again inside and makes it. I would just like to mention that Matt Bradford just got out rebounded by Joe Cop. <laughs> And from this view in the camera, if Bradford stands up straight, you can see the height difference. <laughs> but I told you earlier, rebounding's about heart. Yeah. And timing. You gotta know where the ball's gonna go. All right, that makes it two. No need to rush. Picks the pocket of Trumper. And, and this game is tied. Game. About less than one second difference on the shot clock. James will do it basketball, tie game. There's been so many timeouts, I'm not even sure who's got what timeout left. And Jeff Ike will take a timeout. With Shump driving to the basket, 20 seconds left. The crowd is loud. This is a great high school basketball game. 20 on the shot clock, 19.7 on the game clock. Which doesn't make sense, the shot clock should be shut off, just about. 
I think they're are they talking about that. No, they're not even talking about that. Usually the shot clock automatically goes off if it's game clock is under it, but you are quite aware of the game situation. Somebody gonna storm the court? <laughs> Do we think that's a possibility? If they score, if JD scores here with no time on the clock, yes. Hopefully the students are smart enough. If JD does score and there's time on the clock, they stay off the court what did before I, they get them a technical foul. By the way, what did I say this game was going to end like? A buzzer beater. Buzzer beater. Here it comes. All right, who's going to hit it? Whoever has the ball last. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Peyton or Preston Schumper. ESM still, or it looks like man to man. It looks like they want man. Trey Autry turns it over. Oh man, a lot of pressure on these free throws. Cook will be at the line for two. He's been giving them a little something all game long. We can definitely hear the JD student section. First one is in. Timeout by Coach Kilpatrick. We're gonna go to the final second, see what he's trying to do. Settle down, guys. The game's not over yet. Don't celebrate too early. That's right, not, and not to mention, don't get a technical foul from your, your student section. Ah, inside work, three pointers, steals. This game has had a little bit of everything. You're going, let's see, make the free throw, you're going full court. If to does slow JD down? have a timeout left? I'm not sure if they do, but I take the timeout in advance. If you don't have timeout, ESM, you definitely got to get up. So I wouldn't say full court. I'd say a little past half court. Just to just the, to make them play the inbounds. The ability of the Shumperts in this game that they've shown, you just can't give them that much time to get up that far because they're dangerous in half court. I don't care how much time is on the clock. I don't care where it is on the floor. Especially I'm, at this point in the game. You know, if it's halftime, I wouldn't mind dropping back. But if the game's on the line. All right, here you go. This could be the best five seconds of basketball. Shooting one. It's in. And, JD does not have a timeout. And that's the game. No buzzer beater, ESM takes it. And who other than Cook to get that tip to end that game? Ooh, that quieted the crowd. What a game. ESM should get back on the court though to do the Handshakes. All right, give me your two top players of the game. Cook. And. The Shumperts combined because they each had a great half. Uh, Preston Shumpert first half, Peyton Shumpert second half. Awesome. But I, Cook jumps everything. The, he made the two more, most important plays of the game when they mattered most, so credit uh, to him. Casey, we can't thank you enough. On behalf of ESM's video club, coming out for Camp Good Days and Hoops for Courage, this has been Michael Ferris along with Casey Vaughn. Have a good night.